Say, Lord, I just want to be with you. Come on, I just want to be with you. I want to be with you. No, I need you to say it honestly, not churchy. Wow, I, I want to be with you. Thank you. I want to be with you, God. I want to, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. We worked all week. We worked for months. We worked all year. We've had a phenomenal time. And tonight, I just want to, I just want to be with you. Because nothing anyone sings, nothing anyone says, nothing anyone plays will matter. If we're not present to his presence. So Lord, here we are. So Lord, here we are. Present to your presence. And we bless your name. Hallelujah. And we bless your name. And we and we bless your name. And we bless. And we honor you. And we pray. And we thank you, and we give you glory, and we lift you up, and we say yes, and we are here in your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship your name. We worship your name. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. Tis so sweet to draw into his heart, just to take him at his word, just to rest. Upon his promise, just to know the Savior, Lord, I need to
is from expectations of manifestation. Bishop has given to us the text of Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Uh, I want to lift up Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Out of the King James Version says this, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. Listen, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Habakkuk says, this is our present situation. We've got failure in the economy. We've got failure in the agriculture. We've got failure to produce, to go to market. We cannot make money to live. And we may die. And what is precious to us, both in cooking, in living, and in worship, has all deteriorated. He says it right there in the text. He says, and the labor of the olive, which is how we make money, it is how we eat, it is how, watch this, we worship. He says, oh, that's failing. And the fields yield no meat. Flocks are cut off. And there are no more herds. There are, there are no more animals by the herd in the stalls. We've got a money problem. Yeah. We've got a life problem. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a worship problem. Yeah. Yeah. But this is what it says, yet yeah. I will rejoice yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. And I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah. Here's the statement of faith that goes from expectation to manifestation. The Lord God is yeah. my strength. Yeah. And he will make my feet like hinds feet, a mountain goat, and he will cause me to walk on my high places. Come on, let's do this for a second. Let's talk about from expectation to manifestation. Habakkuk, first of all, was a member of the Levitical guild. Right, right. He was a Levite. Yes, sir. Habakkuk was responsible for attending to the temple. Yeah. Habakkuk was a musician. All right. Habakkuk was an armor bearer. All right. Habakkuk was an adjutant. Yes, 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 yes. Habakkuk was the maintenance person. Uh -huh. well, Habakkuk was the band driver. All right. Habakkuk was the butcher for the sacrifice. All right. All right. Habakkuk understood and knew his way around the temple. Uh -huh. Habakkuk worked with all of these particular things. He was a gardener. He was a cook. He was a musician. He was a part of the Levitical guild because their responsibility was to take care of the temple and to provide a level of quality of life for the high priest and those that serve. And so yet he has this understanding about the need for all of these things to work right in order for him to do his job. Have you ever been in a situation where nothing went right that day? That week? Can I just talk to real people who just teach you? Nothing went right. And every time you move the left, Something breaks out on the right. You go to try to take care of what broke out on the right. Something breaks in the middle. And then there's always you feeling as though you are chasing yourself, trying to keep up with yourself, because life will do you that way. Sometimes things that you expect to happen never happen. And things that you never thought would happen take place. So 
We're here at the end of Habakkuk, the end of this minor prophet, the end of his particular devotion, because he is making a statement that even if nothing changes in his physical life, he is committed to stay, to stay in places of faith, even when circumstance doesn't look like faith. Yes. Oh. Yes. Are we here? Yes. He, he says that, that's it. He says, I'm going to stay in faith. My circumstance doesn't look like my faith. So I have an option here because I can go emotional and go postal and decide, decide that I'm going to doubt, I'm going to be in fear, that I'm going to react to my circumstance, or I can stay in faith. That's difficult to have this conversation in New Orleans, uh, but it should really be not difficult at all because you, most of you, have survived some things that others that have watched from around the country and around the world could have never come through. And yet, circumstances did not lend themselves to your benefit, but there is something about circumstance has a way of pushing the very thing that God had put in you, and it squeezes it out of you. Nothing ever grows in comfort. God wants you to be uncomfortable. Ain't nobody talking to me. Uncomfortable in certain areas of growth of faith. Faith is a process that grows in the in the garden of things that are not comfortable. And yet God does a weird thing. And what's the weird thing, Pastor? God makes us comfortable with being uncomfortable. One of the tests of faith is are you comfortable being uncomfortable? Because if you're always talking about your discomfort, uh -huh. your faith has not been, you have not given faith an opportunity to situate you in your circumstance, uh -huh. no matter what your circumstance may be, yeah. because that's what's happening out there, but that's not what's happening in here. That's what's happening out there, that's not what's happening Come on, in here. Because in here, there's something else going on. Yeah, Habakkuk lays it out for us at the end of this particular small book, this minor book. He is outlining and detailing that there is a problem in the earth. There's a problem in the economy. There's a problem in the worship. There's a problem in my home. And while I look to come to spaces and places of encouragement, because Habakkuk is thinking, well, at least I can get to the temple. At least I can worship up the olive. The labor of the olive has failed. Well, at least I can have a good meal. The labor of the olive has failed. Because you need this for cooking. You need this for economy. You need this for worship. And what happens when everything you need fails? What do you do? How do you how do you what, how do you navigate through this? And and I clearly understand that Bishop has focused us on chapter two, verse one through four. We'll get to that in just a moment. But I need you to understand the end first. Let's go to the end. Since he's been preaching on it all year, let's just get to the end and then back up. Because then it will explain how we got here. So you cannot, you have to A, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Because when you decide that things are uncomfortable, yet I'm comfortable in them, all of a sudden God is going to use you in a way that you had never expected. When you determine that faith in you will not put faith in your circumstance. Because faith in you is faith in God, not faith in it. And anytime circumstances begin to shake our internal faith, come on, say it like that. Anytime external circumstances shake internal faith, then we have allowed and we have said that what's outside of us is greater than what's in us. Come on, come on, just say, give me some Bible. So Jesus, Jesus is asleep on a boat in a storm. He's, he's asleep 
on a boat in a storm. In a storm. Uh -huh. okay, let's try this one more time. Come on. Jesus uh -huh. is asleep yes. on a boat yes. in a storm. Yes. And so those that were awake and in the storm uh -huh. had a different perspective of the storm. Yes. Yes. Because they were in the midst of something yes. that they were not expecting. Come on, yes. And they decided then to respond to the external yes. circumstances. Yes. And when they responded, I take that back, when they reacted yes. to the external yes. circumstances, yes. notice that they reacted, they didn't respond because they were full of emotion, they were full of fear. Yes. Uh -huh. And then they began to create a narrative yes. for themselves yes. that they wanted Jesus to adopt. Uh, yes. When you're in a situation yes. and it scares you, yes. you want that situation to scare everybody yes. else. Yes. You say that was that was frightening, wasn't it? And we need what's this agreement in our distress, so it validates our emotion. When we're scared, we run to people and say, that was frightening. They say, yes, it was. And then watch this. They validate your emotions, and they hype you up, and then you get more scared. Right. Uh, right. Uh, All right. So they created a narrative. They wanted Jesus to validate the narrative. And in validating the narrative, they go and they say, Master, carest thou not if we fail? Right. So, so what am I talking about? I'm, I'm talking about external circumstances and internal faith. That if you react to external circumstances, then you would determine that your internal faith is not great enough to handle your external circumstances. So you create a narrative so that other people can join you in your fear to validate your, your lack of faith. Jesus is asleep. On a boat. Yes. Come on, in the storm. Yes. He's asleep. Yeah. On a boat. Yeah. In a storm. Yeah. This was no little storm. Right? This was a real serious storm. Uh -huh. So serious that the waves were lapping over the boat and they thought they were going to sink. Jesus is asleep. On a boat. In a storm. First thing we need to know about Jesus sleeping on a boat in a storm is that there was something inside of him that was not afraid of the storm. Right. The impending storm, the current storm, so no storm. So they wake him up. Uh, yes, and yes. they ask him a question yes. that would hopefully cause him to be as afraid as they were. Yes. Yes. Jesus gets up irritated. Right. And he says, oh ye a little thing. How long we got to keep doing this? How many times have our external circumstances yes. caused us to come to a moment of reality and faith? That you can't react to it, you have to respond to it. So, 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 so this is what he says. He says, how long do I have to suffer this? So he gets up. Now here's the MLB version. The MLB version says that Jesus says, there's no storm in me. So I'm not going to live in somebody else's storm. Trying to get someplace. If there's no storm happening in me, then I'm not going to deal with the storm happening in you or in the earth. How many times have we put ourselves in position to die in somebody else's storm? We, we, we are attracted to drama. We're attracted to drama. We need drama because nothing like drama triggers the adrenaline that makes us feel either powerful or super scared. And then we're surprised when God shows up because we've abandoned faith. Jesus says, peace. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 can I help you with something? If you will move from.
manifestation. Yes. You, you've got to live in faith. You've got to stay in faith. Habakkuk yes. says, even though things are bad right now, I'm going to stay right here. He, he says, yet will I praise him. Yes. He says, yet I'm going I'm to praise him in spite of. Let me get through this little something to bless and get out your way. Watch this. This prophet's name means embrace. Habakkuk is a member of the Levitical Guild. He, he sings, he plays, he writes, he cooks, he cleans up, he takes care of the temple, and his name means one who embraces. It is interesting that this minor prophet, not minor in stature, this minor in the volume of the books that he writes, it is interesting that he establishes a whole issue of faith to begin with. And he says of that the just shall live. Have a good chapter two. The just shall live by faith. And so that's why I took you to Habakkuk three because it's going to be difficult to do Habakkuk two if you never run into Habakkuk three. Yes, yes. Habakkuk two, at the moment that he says it, is theory. It, it is, it, it, watch this, it is a proclamation of expectation, but, but it is not the reality of his life. Anybody besides me proclaiming some stuff that hasn't happened yet. Anybody besides me has, has said some things are going to occur and you have no evidence that these things are coming on. And so you, you proclaim it, you, 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 you say stuff. But, but the problem with saying stuff is that whatever you put in the atmosphere, uh, you're going to walk into it. Can you help me with a second? Can you help me with a second? Stand up and stand down there. I'm teaching. I'm not preaching. The preacher's coming. The preacher's coming. So I believe that something good is going to happen. While everything yes. in my reality yes. is bad yes. and says no. Yes. Come on, yes. lady. Yes. See? Yes. Let me get you a mic. Yes. So watch this. Everything's bad. Yes. But I'm proclaiming, yes. expecting yes. good. Yes. Now here it is. Here's how God works with your yes. word. He, he, he lays out a formula in Isaiah that he says, as the rain falls yes. from heaven. Yes. Yes. Uh, he says it falls from the cloud, and then it, the, the whole evaporation cycle, right. it comes back up. Right. And, and he says, and so shall my word, yes. that it shall not return unto me more, but accomplish the very thing that I sent it to. So he's given us in the Old Testament a license yes. to have a foundation of expectation. Yes. So watch this. He's still, God is a mad scientist because he's still using <laughs> science with my words. Right. Because Habakkuk's words in chapter 3 is only his resolve from his theory in chapter 2. Yes. Yes. That the just shall live. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. That the just shall live by his faith. Yes, See, in this contemporary society, 2021, in, 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 in Western culture and in church culture, y'all take that as some romantic, wonderful, oh, be inspired. No, he was talking about the just will actually live. Because yes. yes. chapter 3 says the labor of the olive has failed. There's no herd in the stall. There's no meat. The plants and the vegetation are growing. But watch what he's going to do something for you. He said, I'm going to live. And somebody, if you in any situation right now, just say, I'm going to live. I'm going to live past my I'm going to live past my disappointment. I'm going to live past my issues. I'm going to live past my challenge. Come on, I need you to put it in the atmosphere. Say, I'm going to live. If you're watching this over the streaming network, put it in the chat. I'm going to live. That, that's not my theory. That's my resolve. That's my resolve. I'm going to live. I'm in between jobs, but I'm going to live. I'm in between cash and 
slow. I got a diagnosis. I got no money for medication. But I'm going in. I can't afford the treatment. But I'm going to. Sit down, y'all. Sit down. Sit down. I'm trying to sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I'm going to live. So how am I going to live? Habakkuk had already concluded that for us in Habakkuk chapter 2. He says, the just shall live by faith. Yes, so I'm going to live because I'm going to create an expectation of life. Yes, and the expectation that I create of life doesn't look nothing like the life I'm in. Yes, That's why, watch this, expectations are powerful. Because they are, they're more detailed, they're, they're more glorious, they're more attractive yes, they are. in reality. Yes, sir. And some folks don't like it, yes, sir. but I see you dream too much. But I dare you to live in your dream. Because sometimes the only safe place is living in your dream.
you won't really understand your expectation. Yes, right. So watch this. Uh -huh. Expectation needs a situation. And situation, my situation, have a good situation, have a good three, needs a revelation. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The situation uh -huh. that you're in right now yeah. doesn't need deliverance. If your prayer is, Lord, deliver me out of this situation, then you miss the whole thing right. of expectation. Right. Because your expectation <laughs> needs a situation. Uh -huh. Daniel uh -huh. needs a lion's den. People boys need a fire to burn. Yeah. So, because they have expectation of God, you don't know it until the situation shows up. But what we learn to do is ask God to deliver us out of the situation instead of praying this prayer, Lord, give me a revelation in this situation about who you are in this. Hallelujah. Once I know who he is in my situation, then that revelation will invite a demonstration. Once I realize uh -huh. who he is uh -huh. in my situation, uh -huh. it will invite a demonstration. Uh -huh. Now we gotta act out. Uh -huh. And watch this, that demonstration is going to lead to manifestation. Uh -huh. So how do I get from expectation to manifestation? I got a situation uh -huh. that needs a revelation uh -huh. of who he is in my situation. Uh -huh. And then watch him demonstrate. Uh -huh. I need a demonstration of his power so that he will bring about a manifestation uh -huh. of what he said. Uh -huh. Yes, will I uh -huh. rejoice uh -huh. in the God of my salvation uh -huh. because it's my situation uh -huh. that showed me the revelation uh -huh. of who then he demonstrates his power he makes my feet like hiding feet and I shall walk on my high place and then he's going to manifest everything I expect because I learned the science of expectation speak the word and watch God work Thank you. 
It started last night. Last night was amazing. Awesome. Just out of out of this world and experience like no other. Hallelujah. And it's going to continue. Uh, uh, Bishop Matthew Brown has set it on fire and it's going to continue in a few minutes with Bishop Stephen Powell and it's going to continue on tomorrow evening with Superintendent Eric Slack and it's going to continue on tomorrow night with Bishop Linwood Dillon and it's going to continue on Thursday morning because the women are excited. They are on fire for the Lord and it's going to continue on Thursday night and it's going to explode on Friday night. Because our bishop will be sharing. Hallelujah. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Glory. Hey, that boy, shake it. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again. Chairman, President Ronald McClatney is not made in yet. She in the house. Amen. She's not here. We'll go ahead with another selection from the GNOJ Music Ministry. And afterwards, we will be led and given by our very own administrative assistant, Earl Shaw. Come on, let's clap our hands as we receive the music. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
and you not realize that the dollar has become inflated, your 20 don't do what it did 20 years ago. So if it doesn't do for you in your house what it could do 20 years ago, why would you think God is going to use that $20 bill? All right. But if you would trust God in faith and give God a supernatural seal on tonight, I believe really it's time for the church to start being supernatural and intentional about it. Right. Yes. We cannot just give what is expected or even what is said only. Now you do what the preacher say, I want to hear, hear me well. But at some point, the Holy Ghost should speak to you and say, hey, I know Pastor Sean said give a hundred, but I don't want you to give a thousand. I got a few amens. I see I'm in the right house. Listen, I'm blessed because I never stopped giving. I always gave at the point that it hurt me. Until I told Bishop Brown the other day as a boy preaching in this jurisdiction, I would watch those great administration get their sisters give. 501,000. I said, I'm going to do that one day. God has manifested that for me in my life. Amen. But I said it, Mr. Matthew. I said it. I didn't just think it. I said it. And it bumped into it. Oh, I hear the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. It is our budget night. I'm talking to our pastors now. Of course, every pastor is supposed to give a hundred dollars on tonight. I don't even have to really discuss that too much. That's what you're supposed to do. But I want to go the extra mile. Somebody said the extra mile. There's such a core of great preachers in the house. I believe if we would just push a little further, God will honor us. And when I feel the Holy Ghost, as the Spirit moved in this place. Your supernatural giving is going to give you exponential and also quicker expedited recovery financially. You need a blessing somebody say right now. So that's why right now is the moment to trust God. Believe him at his word. I'm going to give $300 tonight. I want everybody who can to do that with me. Again, as I say, Brother Pastor, we must get the $100. This is not a request. This is not a system of begging. It is your power to do in this jurisdiction. Satan, I rebuke you for touching this mic right now. It is something the devil touched the mic for money being talked about. But I want every able bodied person here tonight that can do the $100 tonight and go beyond that. I want you to trust God with us tonight. You can't just be jealous because some believers are doing well. You ought to find out why they're doing well. And I promise you, the Bible is right. Your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. Now, I know y'all think it means you're singing and shouting, but I never seen a bigger that give you money for singing and shouting. But if you say, Mr. B, now I got a thousand dollars to invest into your idea. He may actually give you his cell phone. You got to learn to give God something so he can take your nothing and make much out of it. Yeah. Let's get on tonight. The brothers are coming up to the sepulchers tonight. We have the opportunity for you to sow also with Cash App, Dollar Sign, Thank you, Madam Secretary, GNOJ. Yes, we do, Bishop. We do Cash App, praise God. Also, the Giblify. There's also great New Orleans jurisdiction for those of you who give in that method of giving. If you're writing checks, make them payable to G and OJ. Amen. Amen. We also have the debit card machine ready. Madam Secretary, assist us with this as we begin to give. Thank you, my Bishop. Bishop Brown, $500. Come on, clap your hands for that. Oh, come on, come on, y'all. Just make a shot real good. I need you to shot on that. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God the praise. Bishop Matthew Brown, $500. Oh, y'all got clapping enough for me. Uh, I just saw y'all praising God on the other stuff. Praise God for that. Come on, saints. Amen. 
Come on, give God some praise tonight. Bishop Philip Powell. Five hundred dollars. Y'all got Bishop Hutchins, two hundred dollars. Come on, give God praise tonight. Come on, saints. We gotta bless God for His demonstration. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're so excited about this moment of giving. We're so thankful about it tonight too, because it's an anointing. Bishop Wiley, come on, say amen, $200. Oh, these great men of God are in the house tonight. Honoring the Lord in this place. $200 for my brother, minister, and sister. You're my brother. Come on, say amen for them. Oh, y'all not clapping enough for me. Oh, Bishop, oh, Bishop, 300 from Bishop Lord. Say amen for him on tonight. Come on, thanks. Superintendent Grant, $200. God bless you. Praise the Lord. The Lord will move if you have faith to move, praise God. God bless you. My brother, my fellow. You see, this is why I love you so much, because you, you my friend. Praise God for Superintendent Gibber. Give him $300 tonight. Amen. Come on, praise God. Praise God, thanks. We got to learn to praise God for giving. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Michael Jackson, one hundred dollars. Thank you, my brother. We got to learn to praise God for our giving. I was always taught, whatever you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. You say, "Well, Pastor, I don't have that kind of money. I'm, I'm challenged." Doctor Bishop Flat, thank you so much for your gift of one hundred dollars. God bless you. But saints, when we learn to do it for others, God will do it for us. Praise the Lord. At this time, I want everyone with your gift in the audience. I want you to stand over the building. We're going to pray. And then those with your gifts who are going to bring your gifts, we're going to bring them to the front. But I want everybody to stand over the building as we pray over this sanctified offering on tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give God the praise for each of you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we give you the glory tonight for your demonstrated power. There is none like you, O oh God, in all the earth. We come to bless your name because your name is worthy. The God, in the midst of this pandemic, you kept our homes from being foreclosed. You kept our businesses from being shut down. The God, you kept money in our bank accounts. You blessed our homes. You protected us from illness and disease. God, you're the keeper of our soul. We come to say tonight because we owe you everything, dear God. Now sanctify this offering with your word. Give the 100 fold return to every gift and every giver. We thank you for these blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, bring your gifts from wherever you might be into the receptacles. Those who have given online already or through those means, please be seated. And we give God the praise for your gifts on tonight.
150 and 100 for his wife. Come on, say it back, but uh, giving is contagious when the right person is asking for the money. We're calling for the hospitality department at this time. Sister Rose, say amen, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. So glad to see your smiling faces in person. Amen. We thank God for our 2021 Greater New Orleans Jurisdiction Holy Convocation. And everybody, we are in person today. And I am so glad to see all of your faces, to even match names to faces because we have been virtual for so long. You know, many of the names I hear, but the faces I don't know, like Missionary Daquana Rose I met on last night, and Pastor Michael Jackson on tonight. I'm matching faces with names, and it's so glad to see all of you here on today. And we are having a wonderful time already on this week, starting with our banquet on last night. Man, we had such an awesome time last night everybody i think is just over exhausted not even it's just over tired but we had a ball on last night and we just thank god that our bishop had a wonderful wonderful time on last night amen and we have so much going forward what do we have going forward this week i'm glad you asked on tonight our opening night speaker will be bishop senate powell the prelate of the north carolina second jurisdiction and on tomorrow our hour of power comes from superintendent eric w slack our project parliamentarian our evening speaker will be the chairman of the the AIM chairman of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Linwood Dillard of the Tennessee Metropolitan Jurisdiction. And everybody say Thursday. Thursday is Women's Day. Amen. We look forward to Women's Day with our mother, Mother Gloria Brown, beginning with our morning service, prepare for manifestation beginning at 10 o'clock a.m. And our evening service begins at 7 o'clock p.m. And our speaker will be none other than our jurisdictional supervisor, Mother. Yes, our, our, our power at 7 o'clock p.m. And our speaker will be none other than Mother Gloria Major Brown. Amen. Amen. And on Friday morning, we will have our school of ministry at 10 o'clock a.m. with our bishop and first lady of the jurisdiction, Lady Connie Brown, and they always, always give us awesome, awesome, awesome uh, minister, uh, school of ministry. And on Friday night, that is our official night. That is our bishop's night, and you definitely do not want to miss Friday night when we will come to bless our bishop, and he will give us a word. And we are just excited this week because this is our first in-person convocation since the pandemic, and we haven't seen each other, and we just want to come and fellowship together every night. You don't want to miss the morning or our evening session, and we just thank God for you coming all the way from Texas and Georgia and California to be with us and the bishop and Lady she definitely appreciate you being here. These are all of my announcements. Please don't be self supporting. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, come on, say, come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Can we lift up our hands in this place? And help be magnified the Lord of glory. Somebody asked the question, who is the King of glory? It's the Lord strong and mighty. And he's mighty in God. Come on, lift up those hands. Now come on, clap those hands and give God what we truly deserve. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad to be in this place on tonight. It's our very first night of, of our convocation. We give God praise for such a high praise and a manifestation of his glory. Hallelujah. At this time, I want you to stand on your feet. As I present the song and present to others, I want you to stand to your feet. And I want you to clap your hands and receive Bishop Charles Brown. <laughs> 
Pressure against the brother of the Greater New Orleans jurisdiction of Louisiana. Come on, crack this up, man. You may be seated. Thank you, Administrative Assistant. Ronnie Crockett. Administrative Assistant Earl Short. Superintendents. Thank God for all the pastors. Supervisor, one and only Mother Gloria. Give it up for the First Lady. All of our missionaries, this missionaries, all of you, my brothers and sisters, I'm so excited because we are not only on time, we are ahead of time. And you allow the Lord to lead you in everything. We quote scriptures, but we don't believe them. The Bible says, in all thy ways do what? And he shall direct your path. As we're preparing for this week, I ask the Lord to lead us in our worship. God gave me the hour of power for four nights. On tonight was Bishop Matthew Brown. I don't have to say anything else. I'm so excited. My boss is trying to act up. But I asked the Lord, I said, now, that's the hour of power, and what about the rest of the worship? He said, have another speaker. Faith comes by singing. No, no, y'all listen to it. Faith comes by dancing. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It comes by what? Hearing. And hearing what? Word. The word of God. It's amazing. Many people get tired of hearing the word. When you get tired of hearing the word, you get tired of growing by faith. And guess what? We heard tonight. The only way you want to live successfully, you just shall live by faith. We're going to get a lot of faith this week because we got a lot of word this week. And you can do all of this and be very timely. Now, last night, we don't apologize. It was a celebration of your bishop. It was not revival. It was not. And our presiding bishop was just so awesome. And when I said to him, Bishop, I'm sorry about the lateness of our he said, no, they did just what we came to do. Thank you, Lord. The convocation is different. We focus on worship and the word in the convocation, prayer and teaching. I'm so glad to have so many friends who have come to share with us on tonight. They were there last night and made a statement. But what a larger statement yes. they're making on tonight. Yes. Yes. We look at Bishop J.D. Wiley, yes, sir. Yes. one of the premier preachers yes, of our day, yes. not only in New Orleans, but anywhere. Yes. When you look at Reverend Moses S. Gordon, yes. nobody anywhere close to Louisiana. There's, you can't find anybody who have not heard of Reverend Moses as God. Man, I'm honored. And all the way from Orlando, Florida, came for the banquet. But they said, you're my brother, I'm going to stay for the convocation. The one and only preaching machine, Bishop Derrick Patches. This man preaches, so the last thing he would want to do is just be sitting up in the church, listening to somebody else, but that's why he's great. Amen. He understands the way to be great is to be humble. Amen. 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 And I'm so glad for my Our Power speaker tomorrow night. Yes, he and his wife would have stayed in uh, I almost said went to Bourbon Street, but I lose my mind now. But they could have just enjoyed together and said, I'm not home till tomorrow night. Not only are they here, they came early on time. 
to be here for Bishop Matthew Brown. Amen. Amen. And then I'm so glad for my son, Pastor Chad Everett Brown. Amen. Appreciate him, and I'll be presenting him in a minute. But I left the last, did I miss anybody that didn't see him? Tell me when we get to the room. You didn't call Reverend Crocodile. Where is he? Reverend Crocodile, you here? All right. I, I never ever want to overlook anybody. All right. I was just sharing with one of the preachers. I didn't know who he was. Sometimes my vision is worse than at other times until I get the full manifestation of my healing. And he walked right by me. I said, hey, who, who are you? And he told me, I said, man, I'll just walk by me. I'm the one can't see you can see me. So I don't want to walk by anybody because I love everybody. Tonight, we're in for another treat from God. Our speaker tonight and his lovely wife, Lady Beverly, who is an awesome singer and worshiper. Sister Cheryl Slack. These are my sisters. I miss all three. That's the only other one. And Lady Hutchins. You all have heard me say I have a circle of six friends. I want you to know four of them are here right now. Amen. And it's really five friends. I'm the sixth one, so I'm my own friend, I guess. <laughs> Bishop Wiley, they know about Bishop Derrick Hutchins. They know about Bishop Bobby Henderson. Yes, yes. They know about Bishop Segre yes, yes, yes. They know about Pastor Eric Slack. And they know about our speaker tonight, Bishop Stedden Powell. Yes, There's not a day to go by that Bishop Stanley Powell and I do not talk. Amen. There's never two days that go by that me and Pastor Eric Slack don't talk. Amen. There's never, never an hour go by that me and Bishop Bobby Henderson. Amen. My wife can tell you all. Yes, Amen. Amen. There's never three weeks go by that me and Bishop Hutchins. That's right. I say, man, you got to call me more than every three weeks. But he's my covenant brother. My All right. Bishop Stanley Powell loves God. He has one of the greatest churches yes, in America. Did y'all hear what I said? I said it right, Dr. Grant. One of the greatest churches in America. Such an organizer, administrator. He and his wife are a wonderful team. He has one of the strongest jurisdictions in the Church of God in Christ. Our national church look to North Carolina's second ecclesiastical jurisdiction for his support. It's because of this man who loves God and loves his church. And then he is a great preacher. Now, all of us, though, right. including Bishop Wiley, if you talk to Bishop Stanley Powell before Sunday, yes, you all know his whole sermon right. in two minutes, Mother Gloria. Yes. Right. Now, Doc, now, listen to this. Now, what do right. you think about this? And boy, I, I'm so inspired when he's finished. I never really get tired. Because he loves the word. He takes time to prepare it. And then he's anointed, as you will see. And then finally, I got to uh, fight the tears on this one. The devil tried to snatch him from us. I flew around, didn't I? Says, and I just sat in the room all day. I just lost my best friend in Louisiana, James Tucker. 
and he was dealing with some of the same issues. So, uh, and you know what? You're not you're not a punk because you cry. I love this man so much. I just sat there. I said, God, you can't take him. And the very day I went to see him, his baby brother had just died. He could not go to the service. But we prayed his wife, his church, Church of God in Christ, and the medical leadership. God delivered him. He was in special home for a while, then went home. And thank God for a wife that just stood right by his side. Glory to God. I get tissue, I really cry. Don't give me that. So we, we, we found out. He came home. Thank you. Could not walk. Could not do anything on his own. But he had so much help. And he was determined. That's right. That's right. This is what you know what I'm talking about. He's an athlete. He was determined. Just like the sermon we heard tonight, he was determined. He was exercising, getting in the pool, could not walk, in the wheelchair, then went to the, what you call that thing? After rehab, the walker. Then he eventually got on the cane. I got so happy, I forgot about Tony Hill. I was glad to see him up. Yes, sir. And I don't know why the first time I saw him walk, yes. and that's been over what three years, Bishop, was when he came to my banquet last night. I said, He's in it, you're walking. He said, Man, you know I can walk. <laughs> he still used the cane a little bit, but I'm just saying. If you had seen him the way we saw him. All right. I had to get that out because Missionary Hammonds, I love him so much. In fact, he's one of Pastor Ray Eichelhart's best friends as well. When our son, Chad Brown, grew up in his jurisdiction, also pastor in Altadena, California, right outside of Los Angeles, doing a tremendous job. We're so proud of him. He brought my grandchildren to be with me last night. And I asked him, and you see it on the program, I'm not just putting him up. I had already told him that I want you to say before Uncle Skinnett. They call him Uncle Skinnett, Uncle Eric. Uncle Derek, Uncle Sad, even Dr. Short. These are their uncles because they are my sons. Right. Amen. And I said, before Uncle Stenny sings, I want you to do a symphonic solo. I know he doesn't do solos anymore like he used to because he's pastoring and preaching. But he still have that anointing. The enemy attacked his body last week and i said well man if you can't do it through just do what you can we know you can say Amen. the world will say brother can say Amen. so i want him to be led by god don't we have the best band in america Amen. did y'all hear him last night this has been our band for the last 15 years God has been 15 or more, right? That he's been our lead musician, pulling the band together. And uh, I'm so glad they're with us all week. Also, I want to remind you, we do have security service. You don't have to worry about your cars this week. Now, when you stay, you don't have to worry about it, but we made sure we invest them in the security. Not just deacons walking around with no gun. All right. <laughs> the 
bringing your cars here, Doc, in New Orleans. I guess they do it in Houston. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Los Angeles. But I want you to relax. That's why I said that. The ladies, they're going to make sure you get to your car. And men, too. They ride husband and wives these days walking together. So we invest it so that we can enjoy the Lord. Finally, as Pastor Chad is preparing to come, I want Superintendent Gillum to know we are praying for Mother Gillum. We heard a good report today. She's getting better. And then, isn't it wonderful? He's here in service. His wife is in a strange place in New Orleans in the hospital. And I do not want him to ever think that we just disregard her because she is such a powerful person in our jurisdiction. When Pastor Chad Brown would have finished, please stand and receive the man of God for the hour, 45 minutes, 57 minutes, whatever it is. He is the speaker. You're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, this might not mean much to everybody that's here, but someone will be able to attest to this. Bishop, strangely, all day, I, I mean, I sound like it, and I mean this now. I mean this. Strangely, all day, I've been hearing the late, great Bishop Lindell Overland Brown's voice yes, in the back of my head yes, saying, come on, lift that right hand. Yes, Y'all ain't ready. Yes. And declare the Lord sure is good. No, no, seriously, lift that right hand and just declare the Lord sure is good. If you got a testimony, I want to hear you. The Lord sure is good. If he's ever made a way for you, come on, the Lord sure is good. If he's opened the door, the Lord sure is good. I've been hearing that all day, and it's been encouraging me as I continue to believe God for some things. And it's an honor to stand here where it all started for me with Bishop Charles Brown and Greater New Orleans jurisdiction. I'm honored to be here. And um, Bishop is right. I was very, very sick last week. Um, thought I might even have to cancel my trip. But this song encouraged me, and I want to just sing a little bit of it, and I pray that it encourages you as well. The song says, It won't always be like this. He will perfect that concerning you. You got to declare this here. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in my favor. Yeah, it's turning around for me. Who can declare that? It won't always be like this. Think about the storm that you're in right now and how God's about to bring you out and show out for his glory. Come on. He will perfect that concerning you. Look at somebody tell them God ain't through with you yet. Sooner or later, boy, I wish I had a voice. It's going to turn in my favor. Hey, it's turning around for me, around for you, around for you, around for you. It's turning around for you, around for you. In your finances, can you declare it? Around for you. In your body, can you declare it? Around for you. It's turning around for you. Bishop, it won't always be like this. My God, what a walking testimony. 
He will perfect that concerning you. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in my favor. Yeah.
time of giving thanks, the eating of unleavened bread and fellowship. We honor the Lord for his presence and we thank him for the gift of the Holy Ghost and for life, health, and strength. I am just so overwhelmed to be here to be with my friend, your bishop, my friend, his eminence to preside and prelate of this jurisdiction, Bishop Charles E. Brown. He was the first like and share preacher that I knew because anything he liked, he had no problem sharing it with his friends. We traveled the length and breadth of this country and Charles, Bishop Charles Brown was the point person. We worked on Bishop Blake's first campaign and we went everywhere together. We even went out of the country together. Right. Right. And I just thank God for his friendship. He's just my friend. I love him dearly. And as he said, he came to see me while I was on my deathbed. Yeah. About five years ago, four and a half years ago, Hallelujah. I had a back operation on my T10 and my T11 and uh, ended up getting sepsis. I had an infection in my lungs, my spinal cord, my bloodstream, yes, my sir. urinary tract, and my bladder. Yes, and when they did the subsequent operation to get rid of the infection, they came to my bedside and told me that I would never walk again. Ah. Ah. Let me tell you something. Don't you fool with me. But Bishop, Bishop, but Bishop Charles Brown came and saw me and Bishop Derek Hutchins, my two friends, they flew all the way to Raleigh, North Carolina and just sat with me and encouraged my heart and I am forever grateful and thankful for their friendship and the love that they express to me. Thank you so, so very much. And what can I say? Oh, man, I am just, I'm like a bee at a beach. I don't know what to do, but I don't know how to get started. All these great preachers here tonight. And look at Bishop Matthew Brown and tell him you shouldn't have done that. Shame at a disgrace. I mean, just, just stepped on the cruise tail and it got the butter from the duck and, and just drove us into a conniption a few moments ago and then expect me to preach that text. I am not going to mess with you. Amen. I am so glad to have all of these ecclesiastical echelon with us tonight in the person of Bishop Wiley. Yes. Bishop uh, Moses Gordon, who I have not seen in 40 years, and I was so glad to see him, and also Bishop Eric Slack, well, well, the short, uh, the prophet short called him Bishop, so I might as well go ahead and, and support, amen, the Bishop. Amen. And I just thank God for uh, all of the administrative assistants and superintendents and pastors and to the state mother, and to the vivacious first lady, Lady C, been my friend down through the years, and to my paragon of beauty wife who I've been married to. Hallelujah. Uh, we will be married for 40 years. Next month. She don't even look 30 years old. My sugar woman. I used to hear Elder Mitchell say, out of all the foxes in the world, God gave me a fox. And I thank God for her coming with us, to be with us, to celebrate with our brother 20 years of stellar service. 
Let me say this about Bishop Brown. I, I, I know that he's gone through some things. He has had some challenging times. I preach a message sometimes entitled Contrary Winds. And I took it from Matthew chapter 14 when Jesus told his disciples to meet him on the other side while he sent the multitude away. The Bible says that he went up into the mountain apart to pray alone. But while he was there, he noticed that his disciples were caught by some contrary winds. Now, when you look at the text, a lot of guys say storm, but it was not a storm. These were winds that were designed to keep him from his keep them from their appointed purpose because all they had to do was turn around and the winds that were working against them would then begin to work for them hello somebody and sometimes contrary winds come in our life to stop us from getting on to our destination but how many of you know we've come too far to turn around now? He even walked with God for 365 years. And somebody said he was walking by himself. But he and God were so closely associated until they looked like twin brothers. And when one morning when he was taking his early morning walk with God, God said, you're closer to my house than you are to yours. And he stepped upon the borders of eternity and saw the tight section of the hands and the alto section of the angelic choir. He saw the leaves on the tree that was good for the healing of the nation. He saw the beast with eyes in front of the back of his head representing the all seeing eyes of God. And somebody touched him on the shoulder and said, Don't need to see it because we like the way you are. But he looked over his shoulder and said, I'm too close to turn around now. Just look at somebody and say, I fasted too much. I prayed too much. I can't turn around. Amen. And so let me say this before I get into the message because I'm not a long-winded preacher anymore. Amen. And uh, Bishop Brown went through some things. But I like the fact that he always had the right attitude. Yes, sir. You, you remember when Jesus got to them, they were rowing, frustrated, rowing. No doubt disappointed but rowing, uh, probably had tears in their eyes, but they were rowing. Looked like death was certain, but they were rowing. And when Jesus got to them, the first thing he said was, cheer up. If you want me to come on board your ship, you got to have the right attitude because your attitude will determine your altitude. So cheer up. Adjust your attitude. And not only that, adjust your psyche. Fear not. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of love and of power and of a sound mind. And Bishop, Bishop Brown kept rowing. Yes, sir. He had some uh, contrary winds in his health. But I, I turn around, he's in the hospital one day, and the next day he's on the plane. <laughs> He said, I made a commitment. And he kept rowing. And look at where God is bringing. And I really believe that the other day, when he was going through, that the Lord said to Satan the same thing he said when Satan was standing. The Bible said in Zechariah chapter 3, it says that Zechariah said, and the Lord showed me Joshua standing which simply means that he was ministering in the holies of holies and he was on his right hand Satan was on his right hand to Satan the function of Satan is to resist is to accuse the brethren so Satan was on his right hand saying he's disqualified from ministry because he has some stains on his clothes. But God said, the Lord said, Satan, the Lord. Not only does he have stains on his clothes, he got mercy on his clothes. So I believe the other day the Lord said, 
to Satan, take your hands off this way. You've gone too far. The Lord will be here. And he has strengthened his body. I saw him dance in the night. I got happy. Amen. And so we certainly do appreciate him. Now listen, I'm not going to deal with the theme. Because Bishop Brown Heath, Magic Brown Heath, you ought to be shaming yourself. <laughs> and the way he dealt with that text. So, and see, Habakkuk, in the first four verses of chapter one, you hear him expostulating. Yes, sir. You, you hear him complaining. Yeah. He said to God, he said, now he, why did you make me a prophet over these crazy folks? I don't understand the world anymore. And really, God, I don't even understand you. That's what he was simply saying. He was saying, you let me see all this stuff and hear all this stuff, and you do nothing about it. The law has no teeth. Why did you put me in this position and this situation? And the Lord said to him, said, let me tell you something, Habakkuk. I'm going to do work in your day. I'm going to deal with this issue. Yes. I'm going to say, I'm going to raise up the Chaldeans. I'm going to raise them up. All right. Now their horses are as swift as leopards and fierce as an eagle. And not only that, the horsemen are as aggressive as eagles when they're wounded. And they're going to take my people captive. And they were in captive for, in captivity for what, about 70 years? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he told them, he said this. And, then, and Habakkuk said, now, Lord, I wanted you to do something about the situation, but I didn't think you were going to do this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I didn't think you were going to do this. And so he said, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop complaining. I need to hear from God. So the first thing I got to do, I got to go into a tower. In other words, I got to I got to withdraw from people. Yes, sir. You can't hear from God as long as you're around folk. You got to withdraw. And the second thing he said, he said, I got to wait. I'm going to stand. You preach to God. You, you, you can't stand if, you, if you're moving all over the place. And then the third thing he said, I'm going to watch. I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to put myself in a waiting posture. I'm going to start looking. And then the Lord said, and says, and I'm done. And I'm going to go to my text. He said, now since you, you, you withdrew, since you are in a waiting posture, since you've been watching, now get your pen out. Get your pen out. Let me, let me stop, let me stop. No, I'm not. If you have your Bible, turn, turn with me. If you have your Bible, turn with me. To Luke chapter 22. We're going to look at verses 31 and 32. And I am not going to be long. Y'all, please pray for me. Luke chapter 22. We're going to look at verses 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Will you stand for the reading of God's word? Repeat after me. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. I want to talk to you tonight for about 20 minutes from this thought, strengthen your brother. You may be seated. Our Father and our God, bless this witness and charge it with your power. Seize my mind, give it clarity of thought, my lips, precision of expression. 
Bend my will to conform to your will to with that your people may be edified and your name glorified. And let there be an alarm sounded for sinners. All these minutes we beg in the name of he who lie down and rose triumphant on the third day. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This message tonight is to expose the plot of the devil and set things in proper order. Now there are two ways a preacher can prepare to preach, Bishop Gordon. He can select the text or the text can select him. Our text is taken from Luke 22. I have prayed for thee that thy faith be not eclipsed and when thou art converted strengthen the burden. Not only for one to fully understand the text they must be conversant with the circumstances that foster the text. The time of this text is an interesting time. And it occurred during the last three hours of Jesus' public ministry. There were in the last, during Jesus' ministry there were three periods there was the period of popularity where he went around inaugurating the principles of his kingdom i mean the the the, 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 the period of inauguration and then secondly the period of popularity when his fame spread throughout the land and the last was the period of the last weeks and days. Jesus' earthly life was about to close because the things that he came into this world to do was at hand. Jesus was born to die perpetuously on Calvary to secure the redemption of the elect. And this text lets us know that Jesus was right on schedule. His death was imminent. And the end was at hand. Bishop Hutchins, if you look at the 14th verse of this 22nd chapter of Luke, it tells us that the hour had come. And that phrase ought to bring comfort to your hearts. Yes, sir. To know that God has a calendar. Just look at somebody and tell them God has a calendar. He has a timetable. So if you are having difficulty in your home, in your marriage, in your church, or your physical body, it is not always going to be that way. Hallelujah. Because in God's time, your change will come. Hallelujah. Verse 15 tells us that while sitting at the table with his 12 apostles, he says, I have an intense desire to eat this Passover with you before my suffering begins. What suffering, Jesus? The suffering of being arrested. The sufferings of being falsely accused. The suffering of being beaten and mocked and spit on and then crucified. He says, for I won't eat this again until what it represents has occurred in the kingdom. And after that, Jesus established the procedures of the Eucharist. 
Yes, sir. The Eucharist is a word in two parts. Right. EU means good. Yeah. Charis means grace or favor. So this is a time of giving thanks. Yeah. A time of good favor. A time of grace. And grace is God giving you good things that you don't deserve. The text says he took the cup and he gave thanks. So our coming together should always be one of thanksgiving. In the original language, the word thank comes from the word thank. You won't thank unless you first of all think. So thanking God is for thinking people. Could that be the reason why you're not thanking? Because you're not thanking. Then he took the bread and said, divide among yourselves. So our coming together should not only be one of thanksgiving, it ought to be one of sharing. Because you never know what the person sitting next to you is going through. You never know what they left at home or what they're going to be confronted with when they get to work on tomorrow morning. Right then, he instituted what we call Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. He said, of the things said at the communion table, the context tells us a number of things. One, the person who's going to betray me is sitting at the table with me. Note, in the midst of covenant relationships, the devil is present. During one of his most intimate moments in his life, Satan was present. Note also, wherever men live, I heard Sheila Franklin say this. Whoever men reside, they have to watch out for evil influence because the devil is right. In the book of Job, the sons of God came before God to worship and pay adoration to God. And along with them came Satan. God questioned him and said, From whence cometh thou? In other words, Satan, where have you been? What have you been doing? Note, even Satan has to give an account to where he's been and what he's been doing. So for all of you that have a problem with your pastor asking you that question, you are lower than the devil. Then in the 23rd verse, then in the 23rd verse, they begin to inquire among themselves. Who could possibly do this pastor Yes. Who would be the betrayer? Suspicion arose. With all that we've been through with the master, who could who could talk about the pastor like that? Who could run down the bishop like that? Do this. He's been our pastor for three and a half years. He gave us purpose. He appointed us. Is it you? Look at your neighbor and say, is it you? Who would betray then verse 24 tells us that the spirit of competition was rampant at the table. Ambition. These guys were in the midst of something critical and important and didn't even know it. These disciples forgot about Jesus. They forgot about his betrayal. They forgot about his arrests and crucifixion.
question and they began, began to think about themselves. My brothers and sisters, you can be in the midst of something pivotal and instead of focusing on it, you focus your attention on trivial things that have little value. Your spouse is about to break down because they have not been getting what they need from you and you're fussing. Your children are taking note of what you've been doing for an example to follow and you are displaying bad behavior. Note, the greatest thing in all humanity was about to happen. Bishop Wiley, history was about to be split in two. Before Christ and after Christ. These disciples had no idea how critical this time was. They were fighting over who would be the next bishop. I can't get no help in here. They were fighting over who would be the next superintendent, who would be the next pastor. And while they were fighting, the devil was praying. Could it be, husbands and wives, that while you're fighting, the devil is planning? You're acting like people without a covenant. You're acting like people without a contract. Well, greatness is not wrapped up in a title, but it's in a tower. He that is great among you, the text, the Bible says, let him be the servant of all. Jesus said, you guys are behaving like people without a contract. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's also noteworthy in verse 29 that Jesus had already determined some things. My, 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 my. I have appointed you a king. Implying all of you guys are going to be great. I give you an allotment. I've already assigned in the course of distribution something for you. Listen to the text. You are not, you are wondering who's going to be number one. But Jesus said, I've already given you a place. You know, Pastor said that the church will be planting some, planting some churches. And I wonder, will I get one? Well, I hear the Lord saying, I've already given you a place. Most of us are concerned about the place that we want rather than what God wants. You want to be an evangelist when God wants you to be a Sunday school teacher. You want to be a prophet when the Lord wants you to be a soul winner. I can't get no help in here. You want to be a pastor when God wants you to be a musician. We need to spend our time asking the Lord what is it that he wants us to do. And we need to stop allowing people to inflate our ego and call us into positions that God never intended for us to do. Right now, somebody needs to say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Guys, what? Fighting, you gotta look at the text. Fighting for something. And little did they know that the Lord had already appointed them. What God has for me, it is for me. The text lets us know that God makes determination. And gives us things we don't even know about. You don't have to fight for them. So lay out your weapons. And trust God. So here we have them. Twelve disciples. Sitting at the table. With Jesus as he. Institutes the Eucharist. 
The disciples are fighting amongst themselves. And Jesus said, I've already appointed a king. And all of you are going to be big shots. You're going to sit on the throne and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. No, the cross of verse 31. And the Lord said, Scholars argue that this clause is supplied, Bishop Matthew Brown. It is one of those spurious clauses lacking in validity and authenticity. The scholars say in the older manuscripts, it does not appear. But I believe it is here because it's in keeping with other statements. But the Lord said, throughout the gospel. Yes. It is clear in this verse that the Lord is speaking to Peter. Uh -huh. But it seems that Jesus is opening up a window. Yeah. He's given us a glimpse yeah. of what happens in the unseen realm. Yes, Here we have I think I better hurry up. In the text, I don't hope a lot since I had my issue, so y'all might get a minute, and that's it. So here we have in the text, we have this trail. So you got to get with me. We have arguments. We have competition among people. We got church folk fighting and preachers. And now Jesus is pulling. Let me see, Sean. Just let me hear. It. I ain't saying go there yet, but let me hear. <laughs> now we have Jesus pulling back the curtain, saying, "Look what happens." In the unseen world, a duality governs man's existence. Here we have the physical, which is the seen realm, and we have spiritual or Lord. Which is the unseen realm. The Lord said. Weak words, the Lord is curious. The controller. The supreme in authority. The master. Do you hear me? The boss. This is not the word of David. These are not the words of Solomon. These are not the words of Martin Luther King Jr. These are not the words of Obama. These are not the words of Donald J. Trump. But this is the Lord speaking. He said, Simon. Simon, Satan desires to have you that he may sit to his wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, all oh on, strengthen your brother. If a general says something, it carries more weight than a lieutenant. If a boss says something, the ruler says something, the one in charge says something, when they say something, you consider their rank and their authority. It goes to their credibility. And since he's the boss, he knows 
something that we don't know is important for us to understand this before we pull the text the law said the one who to whom every knee shall bow the law said the one to whom every tongue shall confess this is the one in whom the father said in my beloved son and whom I well please do you hear me? Lord said, the one who is trustworthy. The Lord said, the one word cannot be impugned. The Lord said, the God that cannot lie. The Lord said, the one who is believable. The Lord said, the one who is credible, the law said, feels an importance to what we hear by the character of the person that said, look at somebody and tell them the law said, Simon, I, I, I wish I had somebody, I wish I had the church, Simon, Behold, what y'all say your desires to have you that he may sit the hell week, but I'm praying for you. Behold, oh, uh, that's a faith they all know. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. Take somebody by the hand and tell a neighbor, I'm so glad it's not open season on me. I'm so glad that the devil can't do what he wants to do to me.
12 guys arguing and Jesus addresses one. Pastor Chad, many of you here and here know that there are members of your family and friends that can do things and get away with stuff that you can't get away with. And, and you know the reason why? It's because God has chosen you and has a task for you. Jesus was saying, Simon, while you're fighting, while you're complaining, while you're talking about people, some things are happening in the spirit realm that can stop you in your tracks, that can disqualify you or destroy you. Simon means hear, and hearing is an emblem of faith, for faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So what the devil was attacking was his ability to believe God. Your ability to believe God is going to be challenged. Your ability to trust God is going to be challenged. Something is getting ready to go down. Look around you while you're fighting. The devil is planning. So don't be overly preoccupied with position because we are limited and frail. We pass things that we should have seen and, and don't see them. We misinterpret a lot of things also. In our lives, we call a lot of things gone that was actually the devil. So he said, Simon, Simon, watch out. The accuser, the adversary, the dragon, the bells above the enemy, the enemy, the temple, the wicked one, has desired to have you. Sometimes it means to obtain by asking. He's desired, he's put in a requisition for you. That he can frustrate you in your prayer life. That he can frustrate you in your ministry. That he can frustrate you, you in your assignment. But Jesus said, I pray for you. Not, 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 because you're going you, you to be challenged. But I pray that your faith does not eclipse. Hallelujah. And that's what we want. We want uneclipsed faith. And he says, and when you come out, because I made a way of escape for you. See, let me tell you something. Temptation doesn't come by itself. Escape comes with temptation. And he said, I'm praying for you. What? That your faith does not eclipse. And when you come out of this, because you're coming out, or just look at your name and say, I don't care what you've been going through. A change is about to be not. A change is about to take place. You're coming out of this. Look at your name and say, yeah, we're coming out. Tell them. Take them by the hand and say, you're coming out too. I know you're coming out. Well, I got your hand. And I have your hand when I come out. I'm putting you along with me and I just pull it and say, come on out of here, come on, come on. Yeah, na, 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 na. Tonight in the Holy Ghost, because you remember we talked about the scene realm, 
and the unseen right that is a duality that governs our existence there are some things that happen in the spirit realm that will affect our physical and right now if you lift up your hands and say yes to god some stuff is being turned around some things are being stifled that the enemy began in your head I want you to keep your hands up and repeat after me. Bring this music down slow, Lord. I want you to repeat after me. I'm not a prisoner of my circumstances. I'm not confined or handcuffed to the negative realities of the moment. Because of God that I serve. He can finally move and turn things around. For and let me tell you something as quick as you can turn around right now. That's how quick you can turn your circumstances and your situation around. Now give him some glory. Come on. you are 
If you write the check, give it cash. I want you to bring it and just put it right on the altar. If you don't use your phone, or if you need the debit card, credit card, system, Madam Secretary is going to come stand in the front. We get ready to go home. Lord told me don't waste any time on it. That kind of word. You all did so well in the first offering. I was not going to do anything. But we have to learn to obey God. Somebody needs that blessing. And we want you to do it. Now, Father, I thank you. I release even to the people now. Bless them as they give it. He did not say 30. He did not say 50. He did not say 100. He did not say 10. He spoke in my spirit 33. Only those who can do it will do it. And you will bless them because of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, start getting your phone ready. Those who want to come to the debit card, come to the uh, give it this way. Get me to see, see if you can count $33. 33 How much I gave you? How much I gave you? No, 33 Yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, preachers of doing it. I'm not calling names, you just want to do this. God said it. They have change, get a change. All right. Some are coming with that debit cards, credit cards. Others just don't know how to do it. You know how to do it. Sister Ivory, what's that last announcement? Ella Whitford Walker, are you here? All right, he's on for the Benedictine. Just come up this way. Where are you, Sister Ivory? All right. I was soon to be this missionary Thursday night. Coordinate of the band, but give it up for him. I thank God for everyone that's here, my bishop, for all the bishops. Administrative assistants, superintendents, our supervisors, first lady on tonight. I just want to say that before the GMOG women leave on tonight, I would like you to come over to my left, your right, and sign up for the whole of ministry, Mother. We have a beautiful sign back there for you on tonight. And please do not leave without seeing myself or missionary Stephanie Jefferson. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone is standing. Don't forget tomorrow, 7 o'clock. You did extremely well tonight. Right. 7 o'clock, we started. You don't want to miss Bishop. That's the prophecy. Eric Slack. And Bishop Linwood Dillard will be preaching tomorrow night. Amen. I nice that you just found your head. Father God, we thank you for the man of God that helped spoken into the life of your people. Father God, we are strengthened through your word. Now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, but not from your holy presence, we ask it for your traveling grace. We ask for your mercy, God. We ask for a good night's rest. And let us return on tomorrow, renewed and blessed by you. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. amen.